Well, hello again, AME394. Um, so, earlier this week I posted a video uh, that talked about how we can use local variables uh, here inside of Touch Designer, and today I want to talk about something called storage, which is another way that we can also hold on to some things uh, here with a little bit of scripting. I know we haven't done a lot of scripting in class, and so, you know, this is kind of like level 4000 kind of status for some of you, and that's awesome. But it also is going to give you some more options, um, and I want you to have a place where you can find some more resources if it's something that uh, you think is going to be really useful for you. All right, so how do we get started with this? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a text stat, and we're going to use our text stat to kind of just initially get a sense of how this particular kind of method works. Um, and so here inside of this text stat, like we did before, uh, I need to write a small script. So me dot parent, and this is telling Touch Designer where I want uh, to store this information. And I'm going to call store. That's the the kind of thing I'm doing here. And I need to give it a name. This is referred to in the documentation as the key. So I'm going to call this um, maybe var one as in variable one comma, and then I need to give it a value. So I need to specify what it is that I want to actually put into this thing called var1. And once I do that, when I run this, hmm, well, it doesn't look like anything's happened. Well, what gives? So in order to actually see what's going on in storage, I can do this a couple of ways. Uh, one of the things I could certainly do is I could drop down a constant, and I could use this to fetch that information, right? I could say uh, me.fetch, and then I just need to put in the key. In this case, I'm going to put in var1, and I can see that, lo and behold, var1 is actually something that I can get to. I could also use an examine dat, and an examine dat is going to allow me to specify what it is that I want to look for in terms of finding information that's in storage. So the operator that I want to look for is actually the parent operator here. It's this thing, project1. And so in order to help us know where that is, I'm going to use my dot notation, dot dot parent, or project1. Excellent. So now we can see that I've got var1 and it's stored as an integer here. So let's go ahead and take this same idea. Um, and let's, I'm going to make a floating uh, copy out of this. And let's go ahead and see if we can't put something else into storage, because we can see that this is an integer. What happens if I put in something that is, um, has a decimal point, right? It's like a float. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And there I can see that I've got a thing called var2, and this is a float. Well, this would lead me to be suspicious that I could probably do something like this. I could probably store a string in here. I just have to put it in quotation marks. Something like that. And now, let's make sure we give it a another variable number, var3. Excellent. That way I'm not going to overwrite anything. I'll run this script. Oh! Oh, this is an excellent opportunity to talk about one of the very interesting things about Python. So we can see here in this string that I'm trying to store, I'm using this apostrophe. And I am breaking Python's ability to figure out what is inside of these quotation marks, right? These single ticks um, with the use of this apostrophe. Now that's okay, but in order to address this, I just have to use double ticks. Right, there we go. Now I should be able to put that into storage. Lo and behold, there I can see that I've got a string that's Matt's awesome that's stored here inside of my, um, in my storage. Okay, that's all well and good. Um, but what if I want to do something a little more exciting with that, right? So let's say, for example, that I want to have a slider. And I would like this slider to dynamically change something over here in storage. I could do that a couple of ways. Uh, one way to do that would, would be uh, to use a panel execute. So I'm going to use a panel execute dat. I'm going to associate these two things together by dragging the panel on top of this. And you can see over here that slider1 is now associated with this particular uh, panel execute dat. And then I need to tell this panel execute dat what it is that I want it to do. 
So for that, I want on the value change, every time something changes in value here inside of this panel, I want to run a little script. And what is it that I want to do? Well, I would like to uh, put something in storage, right? So I'm going to say me parent store. So far, so good. And the key for this, I'm going to call it slider1. So I want to put something in slider1. And the thing I want to put in slider1 is I would like to put the panel value, right? I want to put this thing into storage, panel value. And I need to specify which panel value it is that I want to actually put in storage. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to see that there's this state panel, and I don't want that one. In this case, I want U, because U is actually where this uh, slider is located. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, make that fixed. Let's make sure this is viewer active. We should see, hmm, no dice. All right, so we certainly, we just missed something, right? What did we miss? Aha, the thing that we missed is that we just have to make sure that over here we turn on this little thing for value change so that <laughs> we actually associate the dat with the, the script. Now, haha, lo and behold, there's our thing, slider one, and we can see that it's changing. Excellent. Okay. Well, this is all well and good, but in class, one of the things that we've practiced, right, is we've practiced that we could put, like, say, a filter chop in here. And then this would smooth out some jitteries, right? So if I take a look at my panel here. Ooh, it's awfully tiny. Let's make it bigger. We can see that this number is still uh, responding, to just, responding to just the panel value. It's not actually being smoothed at all. So how could we fix it so it's being smoothed? Well, in this case, instead of just asking for the panel value, which is u, right? That's actually the panel value is just this thing. Um, that I'm grabbing right away. Instead, I could do something different. Uh, like I could ask it for which operator I want. So I could say, give me the operator that's slider one out one, and I need to have my quotation marks here. Right, so I'm giving it some an address. I'm telling it where the thing that I'm looking for is located. And then I would like it to uh, grab V1 from that. Right, so look inside of slider 1 for the thing called out 1 and grab me v1 from that. And now we should see, hopefully, that this is going to, yep, there it keeps going. So it's, we can see that it's smoothed a little bit. And we might be able to better see that if we drop in a constant. Let's drop in, oops, not a composite, a constant chop. So we'll drop in a constant and we'll attach it to a trail so we can see what's going on here. Yoink, there we go. And then uh, slider one is what I want to call this thing. And then I just have to fetch that from storage, me.fetch, slider one, there it is. And now we should see that it's got a nice smooth curve to it because of how it's being filtered. Now, if we go, we could maybe um, see a difference there, right? Like, let's, for the fun games and, and uh, profit, uh, let's, let's store two different things so we can compare them. So I'm going to put another thing in storage. I'm going to go ahead and cheat. I'm going to copy this whole thing, since we've already written it, and we'll dump it in here. And I'm going to say slider1 raw, right? This is just the, the raw signal. And in this case, I'm just going to ask for the panel value. So this is before, like we were talking about, that if I just grab where this um, slider is located in the panel, that's what panel value is. And I want to be able to compare that to this kind of nicer, smooth version of what's going on. So I'm going to case say slider one raw. That's what I'm going to name this channel. We'll go ahead and borrow this ex uh, expression since we've already written it and just make sure that we're asking for the right variable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that for a second there because we don't need to see what's going on in storage. And I want to look at this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and... There we go. All right. So, 
Now we can see that this raw number, right, so it's exactly where I am in the panel. It's got nothing but sharp edges, and depending on how smoothly or roughly I'm moving this slider, um, that's the numbers that I get out of it. Whereas the filtered portion of it, right, the what we call just slider 1, that's the part that's all smoothed uh, by that filter chop. And we could change the kind of expression or the, the width of that filter, right? Um, how much smoothing it's doing by maybe turning down our filter width here a little bit. So let's turn it down to like 0.25, the quarter of a second. And now we can see that that's a little more responsive, right? But it's still smoother. We could probably even turn it down even more if we just wanted to kind of like take the sharp edge off of that. Uh, let's do just a tenth of a second. All right. Yep, even better. So the difference then, right, is that I still have these kind of, I get some sharp transitions, but I get a slightly smoother progression in terms of how I'm interpolating that information. All right, so that's a little bit about storage, um, which is, I hope, useful for you. It's certainly one of the things that um, can be really powerful depending on how we use it. We'll talk more uh, about how we might use storage and what that might be good for in class. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to give you another kind of thing to tickle your brain with uh, and hold on to. All right. Nice work, everyone.